Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back to the show. We're taking a look at why the Dutch always say what they mean. Sounds pretty straightforward, literally. <laughs> it's kind of funny, I guess, here in the U.S., you know, people are generally pretty friendly. Of course, you have different regions, different cities, where possibly they might be more direct. Kind of weird in our society, at least here, that being direct could be misconstrued as being mean when it's really not mean, right? <laughs> it's just being truthful and direct. I don't know. I'm not going to ramble. Let's see what they have to say. This is this is interesting. This is from BBC Real. Be linked down below. Make sure to check them out and check out this whole video uninterrupted with the link down there. Here we go. I'm afraid I can't make it because I'd be traveling there, especially for you. A Dutch contributor recently responded to a meeting request. Blunt and very honest. A stark contrast to how we speak in the UK. British people and Americans and others to some extent tend to sort of dance around the issues. If you yes. are vague or not direct, then people will say, well, come on, let's be honest so we can move on. I was born yeah. in the Netherlands but grew up in the UK, so I've always noticed the two extremes. British politeness and Dutch directness. <laughs> How much truth is there to this stereotype? Well, that point they made right away, dancing around things, being overly polite, to be fair, can end up, I guess you could say, wasting time, right? It's not the most efficient, if we can put it that way. If you're planning something or, you know, reviewing something together with someone, uh, dancing around stuff, being overly polite, not saying the direct uh, truth and what you feel about something or whatever, uh, yeah, it could end up ironically causing issues. <laughs> so there's truth to that. Being direct, which means that the style is that the messages are quite precise and clear. Uh, they say what they mean, mean what they say. So yes is really yes, and yet no is really no. Tomorrow is really tomorrow. Whereas in most other countries, the communication style is indirect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe always means no. Possibly means probably not. The Dutch people tend to be much more, um, well, what they would say, Zach Dorze, straightforward, telling things how it really is, which can come as a bit of a surprise to outsiders. <laughs> ben Coates grew up in the UK, but has lived in the Netherlands for over a decade. I remember just in my first couple of weeks living in the country, I went and got a haircut and then went back to work afterwards. And the first thing one of my colleagues said was, it looked better before you went for a haircut. <laughs> Dutch directness comes from a long history of diplomacy which benefits the Netherlands to this day. The direct communication style is part of the consensus culture. The Netherlands was formed um, based on Calvinist roots going back hundreds of years and became a great trading nation and a very successful wealthy nation during the 17th century golden age. You have a, a political culture which is extremely focused on consensus and compromise here. So people learn to share ideas and come up with their own opinions. And it was needed to be honest about your ideas and your thoughts and your opinions so they could find out a common solution. Yeah. And that still is. It is deep rooted and it's still a part of the communication style. I went. Yeah, that is uh, honestly how it should be if you oh. think about it, though. That's so. not a bad thing. It's great, right? <laughs> Everyone gets to truly voice their opinion, their perspective, and uh, common ground solutions, whatever, can be found in the quickest way. And everyone knows uh, where everyone sits on a subject or whatever. Uh, the haircut thing was really funny, right? Most likely, you're not going to hear that from uh, most people. You know, you might razz on, on your close friends and stuff uh, for fun, but it's still abstract. Now that I think about it, the way you interact at least with most people here in the U.S., is kind of like abstract. It's like if there is the most direct truth and subject uh, in the center, the, you spend the whole time doing circles, dancing around it with you and whoever you're interacting with uh, for minutes on end, like possibly, right? It is kind of weird. I don't know how to describe it. It, it is just different. Most people are not straight up direct, like the examples we've seen just in these couple minutes. So it is very interesting. I went to meet business psychologist Aoki Nauta, who explains that this cultural stereotype means the Dutch sometimes come across as rude. I think that the Dutch are perceived as more direct because we use less often words like uh, uh, please, could you please, should you? And that explains why we come across as less polite. Mm. In the Netherlands, being polite is as important as uh, in uh, in England. It's 
meant to be honest and clear, but it's yeah. often perceived as being rude and even arrogant. The reason why uh, cultural <laughs> comparisons are problematic is that it leads to stereotyping. This means that uh, when you look at a Dutch person as very rude and direct, you are not that curious uh, about what kind of person he or she is. And I think it's important to be curious after each other because then you can make much better connections than when you put someone in a box instead of yeah, being really interested in a person. When it comes to everyday conversations, I agree. this expectation of directness can result in some unfortunate misunderstandings. <laughs> well, the Netherlands, when they speak and learn English and when they translate the, the English language, they will literally translate it. If you have a business proposal and the Englishman or woman says, well, that's very interesting, I'll, I will have a look at it. We really translate that, oh, that's interesting. So they are interested. Oh, man. Well, it could also mean, <laughs> well, I'm not interested and it's such, it's a bad idea. You can never just straight up say that someone's... That's so accurate. I, I, I didn't even really think about it too hard until right, like, you know, watching something like this. A lot of people... Uh, yeah, if you're closing the conversation and you're, you know, you're, you're going to part ways, a lot of people just leave with these generic, like, okay, that was great. I'll, we'll take a look at it. Yep, we'll, we'll talk to you later. You know, it, it's, <laughs> it could mean that you, you know, you were interested and you're going to look it over, or it could mean that you're totally not, and uh, we'll just, it'll just fade away and no one will ever bring it up again. It is very bizarre, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just saying, I don't think that's going to work for me, or, you know, I'm not really interested, or just saying, I'm not interested in that, but I appreciate your time, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm surprised that's not more common. What, where did the directness fall away, like, at least here in U.S. communication? It is pretty weird. Granted, there's always exceptions to the rules. I, obviously, there's direct people here and everywhere, but I'm saying, for the most part, uh, this is pretty spot on so far. It's very funny. <laughs> and it's such, it's a bad idea you can never just straight up say that someone's work is not good that instinct yeah. is quite deeply ingrained in british society it also extends to just trying to avoid causing offense and always saying things in the nicest possible way yes and then the challenge for people is to find out what the real meaning of the words is and we can both speak english but it doesn't mean that we get the real message. Yes. For example, there's a, a British sort of tick of saying, oh, you must come for dinner or we must do it again sometime soon, when obviously the last thing you mean is that that person should come for dinner next week, <laughs> whereas Dutch people would take it literally. inevitably tend to take those um, kind of statements more literally, I think, and the invitation will be in your inbox the next day. And also, of course, for that people is funny. in the UK, it's challenging to not be that shocked because of the directness. A British person would see um, sort of hedging around a difficult issue or politeness and civility, whereas a Dutch person might see the same thing as being actually dishonest. It's not just undesirable, but actually an unpleasant thing to do for a Dutch person. You can Very see traces of this type of transparency all over the Netherlands. How people queue, leave curtains open for passers-by to peep inside, and even how they normalize nudity. Dang. I think to some extent the Dutch are less prudish than the British when it comes to swimming naked or going to saunas or those kind of things. Wow. Go to a popular beach in the Netherlands on a sunny day and um, you sometimes feel like there's more naked people there than people <laughs> with swimming costumes on. When you can't show... Yeah, that's another culture shock. And again, not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just different. That would be definitely more on the rare side here in the U.S. as well. And then other minor detail, you know, like the privacy, leaving your windows open, that just depends. That some places you're going to see, you know, total privacy. You can't see at all into someone's home. And in other areas you might see totally openness. That one totally depends. I've seen both extremes here. But you would really have to search for people naked on the beach here. I'm pretty sure that most beaches, not all, but most, that might be illegal here. I'm not sure. It's oh, crazy. Body, the consequence is you associate nude bodies with sexuality. Right. Whereas when you change clothes at the beach, 
and you, you see uh, a little bit of nakedness, yeah. uh, then it's just ordinary. It, it normalizes a naked body. Although I yeah, she has a point. That, should, that shouldn't be a big deal, right? Everyone has to get changed. You know, uh, if you're changing at the beach or whatever, uh, not necessarily, you know, walking around naked for hours at a time, but regular conditions, it shouldn't be a big deal. She's right. In some cultures, like in the U.S., that would be viewed very sexually. Like for some reason, you know, nakedness and sexuality are intertwined, whereas they should be separate, right? Uh, but for some reason, that's not how it is in to the say, U.S. I mean, I think it's hard to be more proved than the British when it comes to that stuff. So I'm not sure how much of it is just the... The Dutch being more normal and the British being excessively prude. But yeah. There, there probably is a big difference there. So if you really want something, just say it how it is. Just be aware that some people may mistake your honesty for rudeness. And remember, if you say, we must meet for dinner to a Dutch person, they really will expect an invite. <laughs> that was interesting. Very interesting look into uh, some subcultures when it comes to communication and language. Proof that uh, you can speak the same language. In this case, you could speak English to another person and not possibly be really talking the same language, if that makes sense. Stuff like this is uh, what this is about, learning about interesting things, big or small, when it comes to cultures. Uh, so let me be direct here. This was very interesting. I was very intrigued by this, and <laughs> uh, I find it enlightening, to be quite frank. Um, I think a little more directness, uh, maybe a little bit at a time, would be good for some other cultures, especially like here in the U.S. Like I said, it really does vary, but I think that's actually not rude, like people would think. I think it's quite the opposite. I think it's truthful. I think it's honest. Being straightforward, uh, not messing around, right, is something uh, some people, it, like here in the U.S., even myself, could could work on, could work towards. Uh, so I think that's really, really cool. Uh, let me know your thoughts and your experiences with this type of thing down below. I would love to hear your stories down there. Uh, throw a like on there, of course, if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you want to be part of this amazing community. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you later.